I always find when I sleep at night, so I had a shower last night and I parted my hair, but now I always find I sleep on one side of my hair and it like, as I sleep, it like pushes it up. So then I wake up and one side of my hair, like, can you see this little, little king? Yeah, and I oh get a little God, like, hey. lump. And normally I have to straighten it, but I feel like it's not too bad today. And most people listen to us rather than watch us, so like hopefully that's not the case. <laughs> <laughs> this is when everyone switches. I know. <laughs> Um, no, I washed my hair this morning and I was like, oh, I'm going to blow dry. And I forget how much like volume that gives you. And yeah. that is why people blow dry their hair. Yeah. I know. Whenever I blow dry my hair, I either have to, if I, if I want to blow dry it completely, I then have to straighten it a bit. Not completely, but just yeah. to like calm it down a bit. A little bit. Um, or I just blow dry it a little bit and then let like the natural curls underneath just like take over. Yeah, which are paying, by the way. People Thanks. would pay good money for that. I know, but I find it annoying because most of my hair on top is straight but it's just the underneath that's curly so it just looks yeah, like yeah, yeah. i've straightened sort of half of my hair and forgotten really the underneath the top half. <laughs> yeah which is not a good look <laughs> oh we love that we love that yeah Hi guys, welcome back. I'm in and I'm Evie and this is our podcast Let's, Let's be, be honest, honest. Don't forget, to, you can find our podcast in all the usual places, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and if you desire, you know, leave us a little request, a little review, anything that you fancy. You can even watch us on YouTube at Im and Evie, let's be honest, and you can also follow us on Twitter at Im and Evie to see everything that we are up to. <laughs> so, um, how are we this week? Good. I mean, pretty much the same as last week, to be quite honest. Um, <laughs> still applying for jobs, still waiting Woo-hoo! for responses, um, and just kind of watching shows, drinking lots of coffee. Um, we love, we love. Trying to survive in this cold weather. Oh, my word. Minus <gasps> seven on Tuesday in London. I was like, I don't think in my lifetime it has been minus seven. I know. It's, it is so cold. I, I can't even fathom it. Like I go out and I literally, I've started wearing my mask. If we've been yes. to the shops and then we go on a dog walk or something, I just keep my mask on. Just leave it on. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, I said that to um, my brother and he was like, why are you wearing it in, like, in public now? Like Imogen, why are you being so like nervous? And I was like, it keeps my nose warm. Exactly. I then get, feel, my forehead feels left out because that's the only thing that's like yes. bare. <laughs> like <laughs> if I'm not wearing a hat. So yeah. But how are um, you doing? We're good. It's been a really, really busy week at work. Um, but I've got a couple of days off next week, nice. which will be delightful. Although, and to all those people who work office jobs intrigued, do you just condense your workload from five days to three days if you take the end half of the week off? Because I looked at my diary from Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday... And I'm like, why, 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 why? <laughs> Have they given you more work? Um, it just so happens. So initially I had Wednesday, Thursday, Friday off. Mm. But I was like, we can't do anything. I don't feel like I need like a proper break. Yeah. So I'll just take like Thursday, Friday off. It's normally quite a chill day. Or at least Friday definitely is. Thursday kind of depends. Um, so I wasn't supposed to be in work this Wednesday. And I am on calls nine till four. Oh. Um, and then the same for Tuesday and the Monday, which normally is my busiest day of the week. Um, cause it's like when all the reports come in, you have all these meetings to like get everyone aligned, blah, 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 is now the quietest day of the week. So, you know, there is something wrong when mm, that happens. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, you'll get through it. It'll be fine. I have faith. Just think I'm of so the days off you're going to have, like, you can just chill and watch shows, honestly. <laughs> and Cafe Nero, the blessing that they are, have sent me a free coffee. So you Love know that. what I'm going to do on my day off? Nice little Vanilla, walk. Nice latte, a little walk. Yeah. And it's supposed to be sunny. Nice. See, everything's going to work out. It's going to be great. <laughs> <laughs> um, speaking of sunshine, my icebreaker question I have today, which I actually don't know your answer for, so I'm very intrigued, is what is your favourite season? As, as in like autumn, winter, spring, summer. Oh my gosh, I wasn't prepared for this. 
Okay, gut instinct, because when you said that, I'm just going to go with the first one that came into my head. Autumn. Interesting, okay. Why is that? I like the fact that it's... Most of the time, it's normally, like, hot, but not... You, you don't sweat. Yeah. Um, crunchy leaves. We love the colours. And it's just a nice time of year. Like, there's nothing in particular you're looking forward to. But, like, it, things start to get on their way because, you know, schools go back. Um, like, grad schemes start. I don't know. I mean, it's Henry's birthday in October, so that's always fun to It's like It's to. almost like the but, beginning of the year, but not the beginning of the year because, like, everything sort of, like, exactly. starts back up, but it's not the middle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Because um, I find, like, I love summer... Yeah, see, but that was going to be my summer answer. just gone was too hot. Well, this is the thing. I'm like, in my head, I'm like, summer is my favourite season. But then when we're yeah. in summer, the sweat level and the chafing no. is just not the one. Eczema, no oh. thank you. But I think I, I just think I like summer because everything's open, everyone's happier. Yeah, And true. life just seems better. But I guess, I mean, to be honest, whenever it's any season, there's always something to complain about. Yeah, I was so, thinking that, because then fall, you get a lot of rain half the time. Well, exactly. And sometimes it can be really cold, and you're thinking, hold on, we're not in winter yet. Like, mm. I'd say either summer or autumn. Are we just completely discriminating against spring here? Okay, so spring. I love when the flowers start coming out, the daffodils. The bluebells, the crocuses, Loughborough Campus in spring, my favourite place in the world. They have cherry trees. They have little flowers on the lawn. People are out playing sport. Mm -hmm. You're sat there with your coffee. Oh, it's dreamy. It just needs to be a bit warmer, I think, in spring. Yeah, I think that's what I need. I need a bit more warmth. Because by the time we get to, like, April, May, which is, like, end part of spring, I'm like, ooh, this is good. I'm ready. Yeah. This week... We're talking about, like, dreams, aspirations, career goals, what inspires us, what motivates us, things like that, right? Which we love. Yeah. So should we start talking about, like, um, seeing as we've spoken about what we're both doing as a career, Mm -hmm. should we talk about, like, whether this aligned with whether what we wanted to do when we were kids? Like, what did you want to do when you were a kid? And is that what you're doing now? And kind of things like that. You know what's so funny is when I was a kid, I was like, I want to be married by the time I'm 25. Like, that was my biggest dream. I know. And 25, how old are we now? 20, <laughs> I'm 23. 22 and 23? Yeah. That is like two wa- two years away because I'm 23 in June and I'm like, oh, no, thank you. Like, I don't want, I don't want to be married at 25. Like, my life has only just begun. But I think when you're, even when you're like 16, 25 is so far away that you're like, oh my God, yeah, of course I want that. Yeah. Um, so that was like the <laughs> biggest one that I was thinking about. Um, and then when I was a kid, okay, so there were two main dreams. One was to be a Strictly Come Dancing professional. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, and the other one was to be a doctor, but I'm so glad that I haven't done either of them. I mean, I wish I still did ballroom and Latin dancing because that is just fun and it is nice to be able to dance, but oh my word, no, I have so much respect for doctors, but I get far too stressed far too easily. (laughs) Yeah, I couldn't do that. (laughs) I honestly think some people are just born with that, the ability to be able to do that as a career. Yes, you could probably learn it, but I feel like some people just have that, like, innate... It's, like, inert. Yeah. Yeah. Innate, there you go. Not inert. (laughs) I don't know. Is that a word? I don't... Inert. I've never heard that. I think you made it up. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, What about you? What would you... What would, like, little Evie say to you? Um, She would probably say a professional tennis player. Um, yes. That was, like, for a, for a while, before I understood that you actually have to, like, work really hard and train oh my and, God, like, yeah. actually do loads of tournaments to do that. <laughs> um, that was kind of my dream. But I think it was just because mm-hmm. I knew that that was, like, as a kid, that was something or one of the only things I was good at. And so I was just like, oh, well, everyone says I'm good at it. And, you know, it's like, it was, I don't want to, like, it's going to come off wrong, but it was kind of like what I was known for. Yeah, which is so nice because I find like now 
because of like social media whatever you you very rarely have a skill that is just like yours because yeah. anyone can do it you can type in a word and you can find like 200 people that are also like known for being a tennis player but i find it so funny when i talk to people from school and they're like does evie still play tennis and i'm like she does <laughs> that's what um, i mean it's like that's what people th- <laughs> when they think about me they think of like tennis and sport which is you know yeah so that's probably what i would say but you know i wouldn't ever dream of doing that now i think maybe in another life it would be interesting to try oh my god yeah no i struggled to get up this morning so (laughs) it's it's literally nearly 11 o'clock um i think maybe in another life i would like to try that as a career but then i feel like in another life why not why don't i try and be a doctor like do you know what i mean oh my word you know what that's so funny because the book that evie maddie and i are gonna read next month Mm -hmm. is midnight library yeah and that's all about like if you could pick up another book that was like, if you was a doctor, if you was a professional tennis player, like, would you be happy living that life? Yeah. Because every, it's like the idea that life is like a tree and every branch that you take can then split off into like many little twigs. Yeah. Um, so I, I would so love to do that. I would love the idea of just like seeing whether I'd be happy in another life and like yeah. a life that I thought I'd be happy really wouldn't be happy do you know what i mean yeah completely it is crazy because you can like, live on what ifs can't you well that's why i'm a strong believer in like everything happens for a reason like you are going down the path sure. you're supposed to be going down at this moment like even if it's hard mm-hmm. so yeah when i think about you i think someone else's perspective on you is very different to how you see yourself sometimes but also can be quite aligned and i think because like Julie Andrews is definitely like a woman crush Wednesday for both of us. Yeah. Meryl Streep, same. Oh, Anne Hathaway, yeah. same. Jennifer Aniston. The list goes on. Yeah, people. it really does. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would say those people and how they portray themselves has probably influences you how you want to be mm. as a person and professionally. So like. Yeah, I've never really you... thought about it like how they've influenced me um in terms of being a better person i mean like that's all anyone wants in life really isn't it just to be a good person and be loved and for sure to give love um i don't know i think more so they've inspired me obviously because i want to go into film and tv that's kind of how Mm -hmm. they've inspired me in that way not necessarily as people because i don't as much as i would like to i don't know them personally so um, true, yeah. So it's hard to know, like... <laughs> Please. I know. As, as many interviews as I have watched with them where I feel like I know them. <laughs> you know me and Jules. <laughs> yeah, literally. Especially because I've read both her books. So I literally, especially with Julie, I know, like, it, intimate Your details about her basis. life. <laughs> no, but she, like, shares really intimate personal details about her life and, like, her husband's struggle with addiction and how she coped with that and, and things mm-hmm. like that. So... Yeah, I do feel like I kind of know them, but also not really. <laughs> um, I don't know. That's a really hard question to answer because I just feel like, in my mind, they all seem like really good people. They care about their work and they care about yeah family and giving back. I mean, that's something particularly actors and people in the entertainment industry, there's this, because they're in the public eye, there's this thing about giving back. Um, mm-hmm. And do you, do you think, I mean, not those women in, uh, specifically, because... I do feel like it's quite... The causes that they support and give back to, there is a link to, and you know Mm. it is genuine. Do you think that sometimes influencers, um, actresses, famous people in the public eye give back for the wrong reasons? Oh, for sure. Because they are in the public eye. Yeah. I think there's this huge pressure for people in the public eye to be seen as good and perfect whatever Mm -hmm. that is you know no one's perfect but yeah yeah whatever that is yeah but what's interesting is actually so you know the hollywood walk of fame where people get the stars and stuff Mm -hmm. a few years back i was looking up like the criteria for that and things like that and how people get nominated like do we get to vote for people is it like a you know um what's it called like a council of people i don't know and one Mm -hmm. of the requirements for that is that the person who gets a star has some sort of activism some sort of charity in their background that they've done um hey, yeah which i thought was really interesting both ways i know because obviously that's like important obviously to give back but then you just think like 
are there some people because getting a Hollywood star is like a big deal a um, huge deal yeah yeah and so like and I think also it might be the same with getting like knighted as like an MBE and things like that I don't know yeah well so that I mean so my grandpa got an OBE and that was because of his service to Hungerford Town and Manor if you email him it will be at the bottom of his email <laughs> um <laughs> And that's all, like, any of those accolades are for people that have given back to society. Yeah. I think because normal people can get them as well, it definitely removes that aspect of fakeness, yeah. perhaps. Yeah. Um, but that's really interesting. I didn't even, I guess it's the American equivalent of... Can, yeah. Can they get knighted in America? I don't no, think so, they don't no. have a king and queen. No. Oh, okay, so maybe not celebrity-wise, but, like, I know your gran was so important to you and still mm. is. Do you think that your mum, um, strong female women, teachers, have, like, shaped who you aspire to be and who you are now? I think so, for sure. Um, particularly my mum and my grandma. They're also, they're both very similar. Or they both were very similar in their personalities. Um, but my mum in particular worked, you know, for 25, 26 years at the BBC in London. Literally moved to London when she was 18 as, like, a secretary or something, I think. And then just literally worked her way up. Which, as someone wanting to go into that industry, obviously, that wouldn't happen in nowadays. <laughs> like, good luck. Um, but, yeah, she's... I mean, yeah, she's one of my biggest inspirations. She's strong. She's literally, like, doesn't take any bs you know and just we love is there Becky. for everyone literally Absolute like shout. yeah she's literally like Honestly, doing my dad's emails like... for him and like <laughs> when he should be emailing people and she's sat there doing it all for him so yeah she you your family is one of my i think my biggest take home from like who how i aspire to be is like families that have influenced me. So I've got like people from secondary school who've got the most amazing parents. Who, obviously, I only see the superficial side. Like I don't see the nitty gritty of day to day life and bickers, etc. Yeah. But like there are, I'd say there are three or four like role models in terms of like family life. And your parents and you as a family are Aww. one of my strongest like rocks. That's cute. Oh my gosh, Becky <laughs> is an absolute queen. She's going to be, be listening to honest. this, so she will appreciate all this. <laughs> <laughs> me and her message on the reg like oh have you watched this bbc show have you watched this bbc show i know you're honestly part of the like... family like you are literally like i don't watch the set not all the same shows she watches and if i don't watch a show it's usually a show that you watch <laughs> so you're there to fill that sat- <laughs> literally she'll be like oh have you watched this show and i'll be like oh i was meaning to watch that have you watched this <laughs> It's funny but what about for you so like who uh, what are your inspirations and who aspire who do you like aspire to be like or you know in terms of celebrities okay. or just anyone mm. celebrities okay celebrities is a bit of a rogue one but as some of you may have figured evie knows i want to climb the corporate ladder i want to be ceo i want to be on the board i want to be trotting around in my Louboutins and Big coat, big sunglasses. People are like, oh, Miss James has arrived. Meryl Little Streep and the devil running behind Prada me. For sure. Exactly. <laughs> that is what I aspire to be. Um, I'm, not, I'm not bothered by influencers, Love Island. That seems really quite shallow. Yeah, that is. And to be perfectly honest, I've seen how some of them are scrutinised on Instagram. And I think it's really harsh. And I think they're just trying to make a life. I don't always agree with their choices, but I, I'm i so against people ripping them down just for the sake of how they've become famous because what is the need? There's enough negativity in the world and you don't need to add to it. Um, so, yeah, Meryl Streep, Devil Wears Prada. I love, love Graham Norton. I think he's amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's just how, like, open, transparent and welcoming he is. I think him as an English talk host, talk show host in comparison to like jimmy fallon is mm-hmm, that one mm-hmm. yeah very different styles but like both incredibly good at their jobs for their own reasons but i think the way graham norton makes people feel comfortable at home um natural flowing conversation even if people are being slightly taxing mm. i love because i think it's really important to make people feel comfortable and you get the best out of people when you do that yeah and then in terms of like real, real life people I know, um, I've massively been shaped by my teachers. 
Um, I had a Spanish teacher in secondary school. She was amazing. A physics teacher, she was amazing. And then people like Evie, people like Becky, um, who just champion you and they always remind you of the person that you want to be and the person you are like there is never any pressure of me to improve myself but there's always support so like I'm really into I'm really into reading books that like help me so Evie's like oh have you read um is it it's not okay to feel blue yeah is that right yeah and and drop me quotes and just check in on the on like on a daily hourly to be honest basis and like things like this like yeah no one actually might find this conversation interesting but it's like (laughs) it's like this little bubble of like support do you have any well i mean i guess we know your dreams moving forward yeah bbc channel 4 itv please link this gal below because please. she is fantastic even if it, even if it's just a small production company <laughs> i will take anything <laughs> honestly at, at this point i will take anything i mean i think the fact that i know that my mum worked her way up the ladder and i think in every job you've got to start at the bottom somewhere and then work your way up For sure. so um i think even just being someone's little assistant and going to get coffee hun i'm a coffee fiend i know all the best places so yeah i think that's i I mean, in dream world, in like dream, dream, dream world, in like 20 years, I would love to be like writing or directing a crime show, a drama show, a film, working with like actors I've always wanted to work with and just like living my best life, traveling, filming, that kind of stuff. But that's like major. Do you see yourself living abroad? I could for sure. Um, I think living in Nashville for five months was eye opening because okay, tell us. it the th- the take home that I really got from living in America particularly Nashville was how much I appreciate England more I've never been away from England for that length of time before yeah yeah, yeah. um and I really missed the home comforts like countryside particularly being in Nashville that's a landlocked state so there was no sea mm. or ocean or anything yeah. and I Growing up on the south coast in England, we are by the ocean. So I I missed that. For sure. The food in America was, like, slightly different um, and messed my stomach up a little bit. But um, I could see myself. I mean, obviously, Nashville is one place in America. So I could definitely see myself in other places in America, in Australia, in anywhere. Oh, yes. Honestly, I will go anywhere. So I I could see myself living abroad, but I think I would need to come home as often as my bank account would allow and because I I do need the home comforts the countryside walks the dogs the family you know so I I could do it but there would be times when I'd be really homesick I think because I do love England yeah you know what I just I that's the only thing London right now I love London I grew up for six years seven years here it's like my home away from home. It's not like it's a brand new city like it is for a lot of other people that come out of university. I miss the sea. Mm. And I miss the countryside. So, like, one of my favourite parks that we're going to go for a walk this afternoon, it, it, it feels like you're in West Sussex, Hampshire, with, like, rolling hills and trees everywhere and you mm-hmm. can't really yeah. see the city until you get really high up on a hill. And I don't know, I don't know how I could live in a landlocked state in America. I think it would either have to be like New York, mm-hmm. where you've got like um, Central Park, yeah, or it would have to be somewhere like LA or God, my geography is awful, so I can't think of anywhere <laughs> else on the coast. But like somewhere where I've got the sea and it doesn't just feel like I'm in a concrete jungle. Like yeah. I don't know how I'd find Asia, although I would love to live in Singapore. Mm. but I feel like they're quite skinny aren't they so you could probably get to the sea quite easily yeah well as well with New York like you've got Long Island and like the Hamptons so like yes (laughs) if you think I'm gonna be holidaying in the Hamptons we got a good future (laughs) I mean that is a dream I just want to go visit there when when I was in America and I went to visit Alice in she was in Long Island actually she was Stony Brook I was, mm-hmm. like, so desperate to, like, if I had longer and we had, like, 
easier ways to Hampton. travel. I would have loved because it was so close. <laughs> but yeah. Anyway. Next time. I yeah. mean, Evie and I have got this long list of things we want to do in New York. So oh, yeah. we can just add that to the list. Oh, yeah. So many things. <laughs> um, okay. Shall I give you my quotes? I have two. I would love that. Although yes. I don't know who one of them is by, which I'll explain. But the first quote is from Walt Disney, which we love. <gasps> love. Yeah. And it's really simple. Literally, if you can dream it, you can do it. Yeah, which I think is so true. Like, if you can dream it in your head, what, like, why can't, like... What's why can't you live you? it? Why can't you it do it? It always like, has to start with a dream. Yeah. Um, and then another quote, which I saw on Instagram, where it was like, you know when people just post inspirational quotes on Instagram and they're just like a billboard that you see or something mm-hmm. like that? This was one of those and it was on the side of a building, but it didn't say who, like it didn't mm-hmm. say anything underneath about who wrote it, so... If you wrote this quote, let us know and I'll give you credit. (laughs) Um, But it literally is, there are 7.7 billion people in the world. Don't let the opinion of one stop your growth. I love that so much. Which I think can fit into like achieving your careers and dreams and goals and aspirations. And also, there are so many people that are like, you can't do that. And either it's squashed a dream or it's driven someone to be like, no, don't you dare tell me what I can and can't do. Yeah. And the um, latter is what we want. That is what we want, yeah. yeah. And also, if that's their opinion, we don't need that in our lives. We can exactly. cut them out, thank you very much. Exactly. That was beautiful, Evie. I know. This was a good episode. I feel I feel good. I feel inspired. Yes. And I think that is the, the big takeaway. Um, yeah. I do feel kind of like, hmm, what am I going to do with Energized. the rest of my day now? Yes! <laughs> I love that I've inspired myself. We love that. We love that. Self-inspiration. <laughs> oh, and it's Valentine's. Is it Valentine's Day tomorrow? It is. Oh, fun. Well, the inspiration will go tomorrow. It will drastically <laughs> drop. <laughs> Just have a self-care day. Have a self-love True. day. I maybe. haven't used that face mask that you've got me, so I need to. I might use that tomorrow. Have a bath. Oh, yeah. Know? Read. Eat some chocolate. Yes. Watch some shows. I know that to all the boys, the third one has come out on Netflix. So. It has. Might have to I'm check that so out. Even though like, I don't love that. those films. You know, they're not yeah, like they're such easy watching films exactly. that you can do something else at the same time, which we do love. Yeah, I usually play Candy Crush, not gonna lie. <laughs> Throwing it back to what, the Candy Crush. What days. 2012 throwback. <laughs> I know, I know. I'm seriously in the nostalgic, like Taylor Swift released Love Story. Um, so I'm just all back in the nostalgic feels at the moment. Okay, Imogen, do you want to tell them what next week is going to entail? So it's quite a good one for Evie and I because we love it. And I mean, who doesn't? We're going to be talking about music, um, artists, our favourite music, what's right now. Things that have, we've just loved, to be perfectly honest. Yeah, I'm so, I'm so excited for this. I'm going to we have a hard this. time. If we're going to have to like whittle down a couple of our favourite ones, I'm going to have a hard time. So... Wish There's going to be some tough contenders. It's going to be like the Hollywood stars. You're going to have to have a criteria. I know I will. No, I actually will. You might have to help me whittle them down, to be honest, because I've got a lot of albums. That. I mean, like, obviously Taylor Swift is dominating my life at the moment, mm-hmm. but I have other albums and artists that I've also been loving recently. So I'm excited to share. I'm intrigued. Yeah. <laughs> okay right well thanks for watching thanks Thanks for listening listening. wherever you are in the world whatever you're doing whatever time of day it is we appreciate you the the few people we do see how many people are listening and we appreciate the the few people that are listening (laughs) and enjoying (laughs) that aren't our family and friends (laughs) um right we will see you next week bye